Hi everyone and welcome to today's short video. Um, what I'd like to accomplish today is first off just start a new project in ArcGIS Pro, uh, add XY event data, uh, consider the symbology, and also just look at a few tips to starting a new project in Pro. Um, what you're looking at on the screen right now is uh, a report that I found from the University of Utah uh, Seismic Network. Okay, as they um, record and track locations of any earthquake. Um, and I found a table here that shows the locations of earthquakes that were felt in the year of 2018. Okay, and so we're going to map this information and, and just look at how we might do that. I've taken the date off of this table. I've taken the latitude, longitude, as well as the Richter magnitude. Um, for each one of these quakes and I've placed those into an Excel spreadsheet which you'll see right here. Okay, um, I'm going to pull that back off the screen and we'll use that in just a moment. Um, but the next thing we want to do is start a project in ArcGIS Pro um, and then start to work with this information. Okay, so I have now have ArcGIS Pro open. I'm going to start a blank new project and again create this project in in a place that will be available for us so I'm gonna call this uh, earthquake map Utah 2018 okay and I'd like to place this in our class folder so I'm gonna come into documents and Let's see, let me come back to documents. Our class is 2900. And we'll call this projects. And I'm going to put this just in our projects folder. And say OK. And start this up. Now, uh, again, as we've discussed before, this will automatically create a geodatabase it'll create a folder for all the project with that geo database will be a part of um, it's going to create a toolbox that comes with the project and just like we've done before within our project folder okay which you can see right here I like to add a few new things okay a few new folders um, just to help me manage my information and manage where I'm placing things so coming and opening up, opening up um, my file explorer, I'm going to come into this new folder that was created with our project. I can see the geo database. I can see the project file as well as the toolbox. And I'm just going to create three new folders. The first one I'm going to call um, PDF, okay, where I might place any uh, any PDF that um, is an output or like a export from my map. I'm going to create a new folder. <coughs> Excuse me. That I'll call shape for any shape files I may have. A uh, new folder I'm going to call raster for any rasters I may have. And then one more folder that I will call the workspace. Okay, and, and this is information that oftentimes I won't hang on to in the end or may not need in the long run um, that's just used to help me produce uh, good information. Okay, with these folders set up, um, I think we're ready to look at the data that we have and, and even bring it into the map. Um, now, I again have made columns showing latitude, longitude, uh, and any other accompanying information all of this will be part of uh, part of the attributes stored with what I hope turns out to be points. Okay, and so the attribute table will contain all of this information um, if I create this correctly, and that's that's what we hope to do right now. Now, first off, this is not saved, so I'm going to save it because ArcMap or excuse me, ArcGIS Pro will be looking for a file, so I'm going to come in and save it, and I'll probably save it in our workspace. 
So I'm going to come into our class, our projects, and come into the workspace area. And I'm just going to say that this was uh, earthquake data. And I'm going to save that out and even close it. Okay. Now, coming back to ArcGIS Pro, <coughs> I, uh, again, I'm in the start of a new project. I've got the catalog open here. Let's go ahead and start a new map. Now, a couple things to remember with the map is that by default, it brings in this base map, and by default, it has some sort of projection assigned to it. Now, in the end, I want everything uh, that I do to be projected into uh, UTM NAT83 Zone 12N. Um, now, if I were to bring in data that was UTM Zone NAT83 Zone 12N first, the rest of my map would adopt that projection and coordinate system. Since I'm not going to do that, I'm going to come in and manually change the properties of that. So I'm going to make my coordinate system, uh, oh, looks like I don't have that as a favorite. I'm going to make my coordinate system a UTM coordinate system. Okay, I'm going to go NAT83 and Zone 12N. And you want, I'm even going to add that to my favorites and click OK. And you can see uh, that our base map that's automatically loaded takes on that projection. We can kind of see this uh, oval-like shape okay? that's, that's showing us uh, an accurate projection through these six degrees of longitude that Utah falls under. So with that being said, um, now I'm going to come and go over here to my folders. And I'm going to update or refresh to get the new folders that I created. And coming into the workspace folder, I can see my earthquake data is there as an Excel uh, file or spreadsheet. Um, now to add this data, I'm going to come to Add Data and come to XY Event Data. And the geoprocessing pane uh, appears and is going to give us the fields that we need to enter to uh, portray this information. you can see the first thing that it asks for is the XY table. Now I'm going to browse for that and in my workspace I have that. I'm going to open up and, and reference this earthquake data. Now because it's a spreadsheet it says, uh, or, well let me say a workbook, an Excel workbook, it says well what worksheet do you want to use? We only have one that has information on it but we still need to select it. Now if this was just a text file or a comma delimited file okay, or CSV um, it wouldn't ask us to like reference what the sheet was but in this case it does now it's pretty good at picking out uh, what my X field is it says LON that sounds like longitude is that what you want and that that's correct okay so our X field being kind of our lateral coordinates and, and our Y field being kind of our vertical coordinates Z field I don't have one um, layer name, let's go ahead and call this uh, Utah Earthquake Data 2018. That's what I'm going to call it for right now. And then finally, spatial reference. Now, when it asks for a spatial reference, again, remember it's not asking for a reference of what our current projection is. It's asking for the spatial reference of what the actual data is. Now we had it in latitude and longitude data and so using WGS84 um, is a great uh, coordinate system for us to reference with lat and long data. I'm now going to click run and let's see what this does and where it places our quakes. Okay, It automatically brings me into Utah um, and it's interesting to see the cluster that's kind of out here. Okay, uh, there's Fish Lake, so we're just below Fish Lake, Wayne County area looks like. Okay, we've got one showing here in Beaver. And so these are our felt earthquakes in 2018. And quickly you can see 
Um, okay, so right near Loa, we had three of them there. Quickly, you can see how we've just taken that information from a spreadsheet, and it's now on our map. Now, let's just talk about uh, this data that you see. In, in terms of our map, we are still on a NAD 83 UTM zone 12N projection and coordinate system. However, our points are being projected on the fly, so their spatial reference is still uh, is still WGS84. Okay, and we can like right click on this and even look at the properties of it. Look at our spatial reference here and it tells us, hey, this is WGS84. It's projected on the fly to show us where it where it really belongs on a NAT83 zone 12N but that's not what the data is in. Now if we want to store the data in the projection system that we're trying to put it into we need to project and so I'm going to back out of our geoprocessing tools and just find project and I'm just going to say what do we want to input our earthquake data um, our output data set or feature class let's give it a name that's a little bit more significant and I kinda like the name that we have so Utah Earthquake Data 2018 Projected. Okay, so that I remember that it's projected. The output coordinate system, or what I'd like it to become, I can do this drop down and I could choose another layer, or I can say, hey, what the current map is, um, which if I select that, it says, oh, well, you have the current map as NAD83 UTM zone 12N. That's correct. I'm going to check the transformation. Um, and I think the one that we're choosing here is probably a good one. Okay, uh, there's some others that we've talked about in terms of uh, NAD83 to WGS84.5, um, NAD83 to WGS84.4 and 1. Um, but I think I'm just going to leave it on this WGS84 uh, to NAD83 and use that transformation. Let's go ahead and let this reproject. And now we have our projected information. We could now remove this unprojected layer. And looking again at the properties, this is, in terms of its spatial reference, in the correct uh, coordinate system and projection of the map that we have. Okay, the next thing I'm going to uh, change on this is the symbology. So I've come to with this selected uh, the appearance tab and I'm just going to click on symbology here and when I do the drop down there's a couple things that um, it helps me see that I can do and one of those is to do unique values or graduated colors. I'm going to choose this uh, because then we can like start to show the intensity of the of the quakes. So I'm going to choose that graduated cl colors. It says what class would you like? What field would you like? Now I don't want to do it based on the latitude. I want to do it based on the magnitude. Um, it's choosing natural breaks. Uh, it's choosing five of them. I could break it into three. And so we could say, you no, know, it automatically picks out, hey, let's go maybe from 3 to 3.2 and 3.2 up to 3.8 and 3.8 and beyond. And I think that's probably okay. So I'm going to choose different colors. I'm going to make the lower ones yellow. Okay, and I'm going to apply that. Uh, the next, I'm going to make orange. And I'm actually going to change their size too to be size of uh, six point. Okay, to show they're a little bit bigger. I apply that and go back and so the last ones I'm going to make red and I'm gonna make them seven point. I apply. Okay, and I go back uh, three natural breaks, different sizes. I look on here and now I can see um, in Loa, we had some bigger ones uh, down near Beaver, 
not so much, and near St. George, quite small. Now, depending on the extent of my map, I may want to even increase the size of all of these so they're a little bit more visible. Um, but for the most part, I like how this looks. Okay, I've just done a quick edit on the symbology, and I think we look pretty good. Um, the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to save out my project. And we'll pick it up from there next time. Thank you.